Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a channel banner for Discord and I made a design that I felt is more welcoming to individuals who are newer to GFX and graphical editing. So this design is pretty simple and it can be done in a really, if you're experienced, probably less than a minute, but it's also a great learning process to get familiar with clipping and tools like the pen tool within Photoshop. I'm going to make two versions of this banner in this tutorial. One on Photoshop. Photoshop is not free. You must pay a subscription to be able to use it. And of course you have to download it and its performance can vary depending on your computer's capabilities. Or you can use Photopia. Photopia is completely free. All online requires no downloads and it's pretty similar to Photoshop. It's not going to have all the capabilities, not all of the optimization Photoshop has, but it's a great place to start learning. So without any further delay, let's just jump right into this. So I'm going to go to File, New, and the sizing for this is going to be 940 by 240. Click Create. I'm going to go over to this left side, hold down my left mouse button, to the rectangle tool and it should automatically default to that and just drag it down. Now I'm going to do control T on my keyboard and you can see the shortcuts popping up in the bottom right corner. Control T or edit free transform, same thing. It's just much quicker to navigate using shortcuts. And depending on your properties tab, if you have that link enabled, you either have to hold shift to get it to transform like this or you can just drag like I am without holding any keys on your keyboard. Let's make sure it fills the space completely, or I suppose in properties, you could just put it to 940 by 240. And if you aren't seeing the properties window, which you should because it's a really important aspect of editing, go down to window and from there, select properties. It'll pop up right in this corner and you can either leave it there or you can drag it and dock it to the side like how I have it. Now, I'm gonna edit the edges of this, make it a bit more curved, perfect. And now I'm gonna grab the character model I'm gonna be using. If you notice, this one says index as the file name. So if you have an image that says index, you can't just drag and drop it. As you can see, it's not gonna let you do that. So what you should do is go to the rectangular marquee tool, highlight the entire thing, either control C or edit copy, same thing, or I suppose cut would also work. And then just control V into our image. So I'm gonna do alt click in between the layers and you see this little icon pops up. And if I click, it's now clipped on, or I can do right click and create clipping mask, same effect. And this would be the image clipped and this will be the base image clip. Let's transform this down and see I'm holding shift this time. So it rescales proportionally. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with an image that looks like that. And this poor girl has had her face stretched way beyond what it should be stretched to. So I'm going to adjust this right around there. That is ideal. I'm going to create a new layer from here. Once again, I'm going to clip that below. This I'm going to call the left banner. And we'll be using the pen tool this time around. So there's really a few ways you can go about doing this. You could create another rectangle, then control T and rotate it. Or you can use the pen tool. And I suppose a few other ways you could go about doing so, but I'm going to use the pen tool just because the pen tool is such an important part of Photoshop that it's really critical that you learn how to use it. And I think I'm going to start around here, click about there, and then I'm going to hold shift and click to make a straight line, shift click and shift click. You notice this one isn't quite straight because I shift clicked onto this line here and this dot on the left and this dot on the right were not lined up on the same X axis. So it had to stand a bit to reach there, but shift clicking will 
always unless it's this scenario create a perfectly straight line for you now i'm going to right click make selection click ok then shift f5 color and i typically sample colors from the image i picked so in this case i'm going to grab her eyes and just click as you can see i have a nice blue color from there so okay okay and that's actually the same color that the background was i just realized that and now we have the left banner of our image from here i'm going to right click and go into blending options add a drop shadow and these are the settings i'm going to be using pause if you have to and then for the base i'm going to go into blending options and go over to inner shadow and this are the settings these are the settings i'm going to be using so let's see you might actually want to increase the passage just a bit on your ends and the reason this is so crucial i guess not really crucial that's not the right word for it it's so neat is that when you upload it to the scored instead of having a white stroke as a border in this case can have an inner shadow and it's going to kind of look as if it's more integrated into the score itself because the inner shadow makes it look as if it's sort of built into the platform can't find the proper wording for it anyway i'm going to click here shift click to the top but do control g to group this and let's call this the base area now right click on eyeball, let's make this red, create a new layer, control G again, call this the text. And then let's make it green. And then we're gonna go over to the left side once again, click down and let's say our rules and let's actually pick a font that's gonna be readable, legible, if I can speak properly today. And as for the sizing of everything, I did 121 and the font I chose was Tokyo. I'm gonna have a link to that font download in the description. But of course you can browse websites such as Defont or 1001 fonts and you can find a whole bunch of other styles that may be more suitable for your server. All right, so that is now centered. And to actually save this, there's two ways you can go about doing so. Either file, export, save for web and these are the settings i'm using optimized png 24 and everything else i did not touch that and just click save or file save as and then choose png from the file type drop down menu all right so with this tutorial out of the way i'm going to hop over to photopia and we'll do the same thing here to probably add a bit of a sped up pace so the sizing for this is, what was it, 940 by 240? I cannot believe I just forgot the sizing. Yeah, 940 by 240. Oh boy, 940, and then let's tab over by 240, background transparency, click create. And then I just did a file open and chose this image that I'll be using. Okay, so left side, go over to our rectangle tool. I think it's Control Shift T. No, that was definitely not it. Con Alt Shift T. Alt T. What is the sh shortcut? Alt Control T. Is that what I clicked? All right, maybe this is not going to be quicker. All right, Alt Control T, and then let's go ahead and get this to the sides again. Do, 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 do. and then go over to our properties and let's add a curve to this i think 10 is not sufficient 20 25 30 30 works and let's go ahead and call this the base i'm going to go into blending options by right clicking on it just like before add a inner shadow and what i did before was a 53 on opacity actually no, no i bumped that up a little bit let's do 60. and then distance of zero and a choke there is no choke that is interesting i think choke is the same as spread so 
someone's gonna get upset with me because I do not know my terminology. And 21, yep, perfect. Okay, and again, this background color does not matter. Red is actually a really good one because you will know right away if there are any holes in whatever you clipped on. So you easily spot any mistakes. Now I'm gonna drag in my character. I think this time I can drag her in because for some reason she did not import as an index. Interesting. Now Alt Control T, go ahead and resize her down. And again, I have to hold Shift, otherwise it's not gonna scale properly. And let's drop her right over here. Oop, I'm joking. There we go. And then let's go ahead and right click, clipping mask, create a new layer again. Right click, clipping mask, go over to our pen tool. And let's click here, click there. I don't think that's enough of a slant. Click there, click, that's too much. Click there, click there, click there. And shift click, shift click, shift click. Click, right click, make selection, shift F5. And then fill, Mm, custom color and we'll select her eye again let's make it a bit lighter okay okay layer is not editable excuse me close the current window first I don't think so try rasterizing it first and then we'll do blending options color overlay and the eye as you can see I do not use photo P often at all but again since it is similar enough to Photoshop I am able to figure stuff out on the fly so that's just a pretty good idea of how similar they are and just for good practice I'm gonna rasterize this layer style to bake the blue into the shape otherwise if I edit this in the future the overlay is going to override any other clips I do, so I want to make sure that I do not have any problems down the road. Shift click, Control Alt G, yep. Folder name, let's call this the base. Right click on the eyeball, excuse me. Excuse me, there we go. Make this yellow, actually that is an ugly yellow, purple. Excuse me, that is more of a pink, that is not a purple. What are you doing? And do control G again. Let's call this the text. And I completely forgot we're gonna call this the left a banner. I'm gonna leave that spelling mistake there. Thank you very much. Not inner shadow. We want a drop shadow. And for the drop shadow, I did a 59. Just do 60. That's such an odd number to have. Distance of four, angle of 180. Doo -doo 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 spread of 4 and a size of 10. Very nice. And as for the text, I'm not going to bother importing Tokyo this time around, but to actually load the font, once you download it, it's either going to be OTF or TTF. You just click load font, it's going to open up a file browser, and as it says right there, load OTF slash TTF files from your computer. So just double click the file that you downloaded that has the font, not the file itself, download, click the actual .otf or .ttf file. Don't click the actual zip folder, make sure you unzip it first, if it's zipped. Anyway, let's just pick a font like Deja Vu Sans, and let's drop it down, and our rules, that is ugly. Whew. And let's go ahead and size this way up. Not that much. Not that much either. Beautiful. Mwah. Chef kiss. Okay. And then the color, let's make this blue. So as you can see, it is fairly simple. I think it actually took longer on Photopia than did Photoshop. Yikes. Anyway, this tutorial was a lot longer than it should have been, but as you can see, the banner itself is pretty simple to make. My one minute might have been a exaggeration, probably a minute 30 seconds if I was actually speeding through this, not trying to outline the steps I took with each step of the process. 
but it is really simple and if you're new to Photoshop, I highly recommend you at least try it out. No excuse not to at least do it yourself because Photopia is completely free, no downloads, no payments, none of that, and you can do it all in browser and I did it step by step for you in the video so you can always pop it up in a different tab and follow along with me. Hope you all found this helpful. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I hope you all have an awesome day.